This was day five of deliberation. So when word came down just before noon that a verdict had been reached, there was so much anticipation here at the Toronto courthouse from lawyers, from media like myself who have been watching this trial for the past six weeks and from the Crown. Now, uh, the, the jury came in, Mr. Nygaard came into the courtroom. Uh, he was wearing a black puffy jacket with a hood. Uh, the jury came in and said that he had been found guilty on four counts of sexual assault, acquitting him on one count of sexual assault and on that one count of forcible confinement. The one count he was acquitted on related to a woman uh, who worked for him as a celebrity uh, party hostess. Uh, she said uh, she had met him, he had hired her to come to a party, and then she said that she was sexually assaulted at his one Niagara Street bedroom. Uh, and in fact, uh, that woman went on to work for him for four to five years in the Bahamas, and that was the one count that Nygaard was acquitted on. Now, all four counts of sexual assault relate to complainants women who uh, were sexually assaulted in the Toronto headquarters of Nygaard International between 1989 and 2005. One of the women was just 16 years old. After court, we heard from Nygaard's lawyer, Brian Greenspan. We also heard from the Crown prosecutors who say this is a victory for survivors of sexual assault everywhere. And we also heard from Kai Nygaard, the son of Peter Nygaard, who blew the whistle on his own father in 2019 and uh, says this is justice. Uh, he came from LA to see uh, the verdict. And we also heard from a therapist named Shannon Maroney who worked with many of the complainants. Uh, she spoke with them on the phone and said that uh, today is a victory for all four women and they will be supporting the one woman uh, in relation to the count in which Nygaard was acquitted. This is a crime that typically happens in private and profoundly impacts human dignity to stand up and recount those indignities in a public forum such as a courtroom is never easy and takes great courage. Everyone who came forward here is uh, to be commended. Well, the jury has spoken and we now have to review the rulings that were made uh, to determine whether or not there will be further proceedings and whether or not an appeal will be taken. Uh, my, all of my heart is with survivors. Um, I've spoken with them it's 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 always so many different emotions it's it's relief it's victory it's joy it's pain it's disappointment uh it's uh this is a battle won in a much bigger war it was that 2019 dinner where i saw him inappropriately touch a child and i said something then and i was attacked for that internally within the company and silenced told that i was crazy that was the last time I saw him. And since then, it's been a massive effort to seek justice. And I saw him when he first took the stand and I locked eyes again with him here after he was found guilty. And for me, it was emotional. But again, I'd like to stress, there are so many survivors out there who this is their day. Court will resume on November 21st, at which point a date will be set for sentencing. Uh, Brian Greenspan said it's still not clear whether or not uh, there will be an appeal. They are going to review uh, the outcome of this case. And after uh, Mr. Nygaard is uh, finished here in Toronto, he's also facing criminal charges, similar criminal charges in Montreal, in Winnipeg, and uh, he's facing extradition to the U.S. So this is just the beginning of a long uh, road for Peter Nygaard, who is now 82 years old and has now been found guilty on four counts of sexual assault. In Toronto, Catherine McDonald, Global News.